force with two lives come together. Sometimes for good, sometimes evil. I'm definitely against it. Can't we have our stockholders to answer to? Phone Mrs. Williams, Stella. Tell her to be ready in about an hour and I'll pick her up. Yes, you phone San Rafael and see if those papers are on the way over from the executive. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Darcy, what's the score? Nine? I'm afraid it is, Walt. If you think you can persuade them to change their minds, go right ahead. Gentlemen, I never interfere with stock issues, dividends, or anything else in your department. I must run my department with no interference. Either I know why and when I need more factory space or you need another boy. And that's all right with me, too. Because I can take these plants and pick my own spot in the motor production field. You won't have to worry so much about dividends. There won't be many. I'm sure none of us want to lose Walt. Or our dividends. Why don't you say we take another vote? Now, all in favor of buying the three new factories signify by saying aye. 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 And unanimous vote. Congratulations, Walt. Congratulate the board. They're the winners. Williams, if these factories are so valuable that other companies would jump at the chance to get them, how do you know that you can buy them at the price you quoted us? How do I know? I bought them this morning. What? Good morning. Stella, I was asked to rush this up for Mr. Williams. Get my wife, Della. The maid said she'd gone to the dentist. I gave her the message. Oh, fine. Oh, this just came. Thank you. What about those papers? They're here. Burke's checking them now. Good. Congratulations, Walt. Take a look at Clause 4. Those provisions haven't been clarified yet. Oh, no? I want to leave for Tahoe right away. Get Judge Deering on the phone, will you? Never mind. I can get faster action if I run out to San Rafael myself and stick with them till they're right. Yeah? Mrs. Williams on three. Oh, put the blueprints of that new diesel in, will you? I want Jackson to see him. All right, Duchess. I'm afraid now we won't be able to leave till about 5 o'clock. What? You're not going with me, but I counted on it. But I thought as soon as Dr. Harris took care of whatever it was, I'd feel better. I don't. Stupid thing still aches, and I certainly wouldn't be a very desirable driving companion. No, seriously, darling, you run along and buy your little factories and hurry home. I'll send you back to the office. And cheat me out of my goodbye kiss? Not a chance. I've got to drive over to San Rafael. I'll stop on the way. Love me? Bye, dear. sweet as you do, Duchess. I certainly don't feel sweet. I'm as grouchy as an old bear. Well, old Doc Williams can give you something to fix that. Close your eyes. Relax a minute. Take a look at that and see if you don't feel better. Oh, Walt. Oh, darling, it's beautiful. Not bad at all. You know, to quote my wife, I like monograms on things. It shows they belong to me, unquote. When did your wife say such a thing, Mr. Williams? About six years ago, when I married her. She gave me the first monogram shirts I ever owned. Those were the words on the card. I still have it. 
I certainly hope your board of directors never discovers what a softy you are. They won't, don't worry. I have only one vulnerable spot. What really happened this morning? All I got out of Della was that you stalked out of the office with blood in your eye, back in no time with canary feathers in your mouth. <laughs> oh, I clipped those birds' wings, but short. No one's gonna vote me down, sweet. Not when I know I'm right. Mm -hmm. But how did you convince the board of that so quickly? With subtle hints and easy persuasion. Like this. Either I get what I want, or you get yourself another boy. And that's all right with me, too. Walter! What a clumsy ox. I'm sorry, Duchess. Oh, please, sweet, don't be so upset. <laughs> oh, if you could have seen your face. <laughs> oh, don't bother, dear. Selene will take care of that. Not exactly a good prescription for nerves, huh? You know, you're wrong, Dr. Williams. The way I feel now, a good cat nap will probably make a new woman out of me. And if it's not going to make you too late... Yes? Well, I'm sure that by 5 o'clock I'll... Swell. I'll run over to San Rafael and get things ironed out and be back for you by 5. On the nose. Darling, wait. That's perfectly silly. I'll take a taxi cab and meet you in Sausalita. There's a drugstore on a corner opposite the square. I'll be there at 5 o'clock and we can go straight on up to Tahoe. That'll save you all that late afternoon traffic and all that time it'll take to come and pick me up. Smart woman, my wife. Thinks of everything. Where's your bag, honey? Oh, Sue Lynn still has some things to press for me. You sure you don't mind taking a taxi? Very sure. Sweet dreams, Duchess. See you at five. Better get going. Distance? I want Berkeley 79721. Hello. Ah. Yeah, turn this stuff over to a bellboy at the airport hotel in Oakland. Tell him to hold it for Jack Burns. Jack Burns, the airport hotel. That's right, I'll be checking in later. I don't owe you. A buck fifteen are here. All the stuff back to Oakland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy yourself a new car. Thanks. Where's that new woman who was going to meet me? It's after five o'clock. Oh, gee, I'm so sure you're going to be okay. Maybe you better get yourself another dentist, huh? Of course I understand, honey, of course. Just to prove it to you, I'm coming right on home. No!
Uh, you really mustn't, darling. I, I'm going to be perfectly all right, really. And besides... Besides what? Well, I've done something you're not going to like. You remember Aunt Margaret back in Illinois? You mean the old gal in Evanston? I'm away ahead of you. How much? Well, it isn't money this time. It's, it's another relative. Her, her favorite nephew, Jim Torrance. All of a sudden, right out of the blue, just after you left, he telephoned me from Berkeley. Okay, Judges, I'll see him when I get back. Well, you don't understand, dear. You're going to see him right away. On what? Well, all he seemed to want was to be able to get back to Illinois, so I... So you buy him a ticket. That's easy. Well, it isn't. I, I offered to, but he, he got huffy and said he didn't want any handouts, and... Well, without thinking, I told him we'd pick him up and give him a lift as far as Denver. I won't say I'm good for you, but where do I find this guy? Well, he should be there right now. I told him to be on the lookout for a cream-colored roadster, just in case we fail to recognize one another after all these years. Oh, darling, you're such a lamb. Are you sure you forgive me? What do you think? Well, I had better run along, or Cousin Jim might get nervous. Take it easy, sweet, and miss me, will you? I do already. Don't drive fast. And please take care of yourself. Hello, Della. Yeah, Mrs. Williams wasn't able to go with me. Now, while I'm going, you see that she gets her roses every morning. That's it. But this time, on all the cards, put love from softy. Yeah, S-O-F-T-Y. You must be Jim Torrance. Yeah, that's me. I'm Walt Williams. Hi, Jim. Hi. Where's Irene? Oh, she's a little under the weather at the last minute. Worst luck. Oh, that's too bad. I was hoping I'd see her. Yeah, I'm disappointed, too. Where's your luggage? Oh, I'm wearing it. Less trouble that way. Irene tells me you're heading for Illinois. Yeah. Going been a little rough, huh? I haven't exactly been worried about my income tax. What's your line, Jim? Oh, guess I'm a better salesman than anything else. Hmm. You know, I can give you a couple letters when you get back to Chicago. It might help you. It's fine. But Lynn with the top brass never hurts. What outfit were you with? Patton's Third Army. How was it? Rough. Except for the time in Italy. I kind of liked it there. Patton's outfit never got to Italy. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but most civilians never know or care, and I, I figured you didn't either. I'll have fooled you that time. chance to chow for a while. How about it? No, thanks. I grabbed a hamburger while I was waiting for you. I can still taste the harness. Sure you won't change your mind? No, I'm going to grab a little shut-eye. Thank you. Chicken sandwich and a Coke. Warm chicken sandwich. Chicken sandwich coming up. Let me change for a dollar, will you? Yes, sir. Thank you. San Francisco. Uh, Klondike 2, 6714.
Oh. We'll, we'll try Sutter 1, 2599, please. Bayview Apartments. Oh, yes, Mr. Williams. No, your maid isn't there tonight, sir. Well, she said Mrs. Williams was taking something to make her sleep and wasn't to be disturbed, but perhaps... No, no, don't disturb her. Just uh, leave a message that I won't forget about a certain problem. Mm -hmm. I think I have it, sir. You want her to forget all about a certain problem. Softy, is that S-O-F-T-Y, sir? Softy is going to take care of it thoroughly. Is that all? Yes, that's all. She'll understand. <laughs> Be sure she gets it the first thing in the morning. Yeah. It's been so long since I've been behind the wheel of anything but a caterpillar or a jeep. I had to find out what a real buggy feels like. Why don't you drive for a while? A swap. Nothing would suit me better. That little scar on her cheek. Mm. That one she got from the fall? Yeah. You can hardly see it now, though. How'd you know about that? She just got it last summer. Thought you said you hadn't seen her for years. Oh, oh. From Aunt Margaret, of course. And how else? She always sends me the news and the letters. be pretty happy to see you. Irene says you're the favorite nephew. <laughs> Afraid my lovely cousin was just giving me a build-up for your benefit. You don't know Irene. Maybe not. matter? I think we got a flat. Yeah, flat as a flounder. Uh... Well, let's get to work. <laughs> hey, look out there, young fella. It's quite a drop. Flashlight? 
I think I have. Get the jack, I'll take a look. Did you find it? Yeah. Yeah, it won't be long now. should be late and have to rush for his plane. This will be taken care of. Thank you. Tell Mrs. Burns the 302.
soft day, soft day. Young lady. Excuse me. I want to see Mrs. Walter Williams. I'm sorry, sir, but she left orders not to be disturbed. I'm sorry, too. Lieutenant, she is the police department. Yes. I'm Lieutenant Quincy with the police department. I'm sorry to disturb you at this hour, but may I come in? Of course. Sure. Well, Lieutenant. Did your husband go on a motor trip late this afternoon? Why, yes, he went to Denver on business. Why? Was he driving a packet, Broodster? 
Yes. Is... is anything wrong? I'm afraid there is. Won't you sit down? Has... Please? has something happened to my husband? Yes, Mrs. Williams. He's dead, isn't he? Yes. Oh, Walt, I knew something like this would happen. I begged him time and again not to pick up hitchhikers. I... But it wasn't a hitchhiker, Mrs. Williams. It was just an accident. He ran into a truck, a, a gasoline truck. You mean there was fire? He must have been driving pretty fast. I don't think he felt anything after the crash. If there's nothing more you need me for, Lieutenant, I... I, I think I understand. And may I say you've taken this with a great deal of courage. Good night, Mrs. Williams. to work for Universal Motors as a sheet metal worker. Mm -hmm. Less than 10 years, he's their top production man. Well, he sure went out in a blaze of glory. Yeah. Well, uh, let's go. Have taken a later plane and still make connections to Mexico City? I see. Yes? It is some telegrams for Taikai. Just put them under the door, Sulin. Please, Taikai, a policeman Quincy most anxious to see you. Ask him to wait, Sulin. Mrs. Williams will see you presently. Well, wait, please. Mr. Williams always sending when he's away. You seem to have been very fond of Mr. Williams. Sue Lynn is honored to have served him five years, and he... I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Lieutenant. I wouldn't be disturbing you again if it wasn't necessary. And I would be keeping you but a moment. You're being very considerate. Won't you sit down? Everyone's been most thoughtful. And why shouldn't they be? <laughs> Forgive me. I'm all right now. 
What was it, Lieutenant? The state police would like to have some information. They found some wavy skid marks for quite a distance on the road, as if the car had been out of control when it crashed. Tell me, was Mr. Williams uh, a reckless driver? Why, no, he, he was a fast driver, but certainly not reckless. Well, uh, was he... was he a heavy drinker? <laughs> quite the contrary. But what about his health? Could he have had a heart attack and lost consciousness before the accident? Why, no, he, he was in perfect health, but he'd been working much too hard lately and, and was overtired. Perhaps he fell asleep at the wheel last night. Oh, poor darling. If only I'd been able to go with him last night, he might still be alive. Well, maybe so and maybe not. You mustn't blame yourself, Mrs. Williams. Fate plays an important part in these matters. Uh, your handkerchief. When's the next train to San Francisco? 10 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, you sure there isn't one sooner? No, I'm sorry. Your nephew, Jim Torrance. The call is for your nephew, Jim Torrance. I haven't any nephew, and I don't know any Jim Torrance. Sir, uh, Mrs. Hubbard says she What's the matter, son? Looks like you need a doctor. Doctor? I can't leave the station, but old Doc Bender's just across the road there. Yeah. Doctor. Think you can make it? Yeah. I'll make it. Now, take it easy, man. There's some concussion there. You've got to watch your step for a while.
of Corder licking her chops. Briefcase doing here. He's dead. They did him a dirty trick if he ain't. Hey, now wait a minute. Don't touch it. We better turn it over to the police. Homicide, Captain Callahan. Oh, yes, Chief. The Duke just came in from Washington. The fingerprints are those of a James Torrance. Yeah, I'm putting Quincy on it. Right. The shot of opens up a new can of peas on the Williams accident. There's the FBI report on the guy. Playing with the lady's affection seems to come natural with him. All you got to do, Quincy, is find him. Yes, that's all I got to do. Last known whereabouts of Jim Torrance was in a moving van somewhere between Sacramento and Points East. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Last known address, care of his sister, Mrs. Joseph Rossetti. Irving Apartments, Berkeley. Well, what are you waiting for, Quincy? Let's go. Terence leave any forwarding address? No, he said he was going to send it to me. Sorry to trouble you. Oh, uh, Lieutenant, if you should happen to hear from him, will you let me know? There's an unpaid telephone bill and a bundle of laundry. Landry, let's have a look. I may have to take this along with me. Not without a receipt, you don't. You mean you don't trust the police? In my business, you don't trust anybody. Mine, too. Holy St. Valentine's Day. Look, he had the same thing on his shirts, too. in your late tenant's life. Did you ever see the lady? You know, I never did. But I always knew when she'd been here, the wonderful perfume. I lay you ten to one, she's a rich widow. Could be. Wait, I'll get you his telephone bill. Pretty fancy stuff for a hitchhiker. Yeah, but he's a pretty fancy hitchhiker. According to the shirt maker, a certain lady in the town had these made special. And they're just like her husband. Only his initials were W.W. Sort of smells, don't it, Cal? Now, take a look at this little item. It was also found in the laundry. I for Irene and W for... Well, it could be for Williams, too, couldn't it? Yeah. Homicide, Callahan speaking. Hello? Oh, hello, Fitz. Hello. What news? Oh? Any luck? Both days, huh? Swell. Have it typed up and sign it. This report of Fritz will be a nice little topper for this pile. His checkup shows calls from Torrance's phone to Williams's private number, and a flock of them going the other way, including one on the 7th and several on the 8th. The 8th, since you've forgotten, is the date of Walt Williams' accidental death. Well, that ought to be enough to get an indictment out of the grand jury. Go pick her up. I'd like to play a long shot first. It might give us two for one. Well, take him one at a time. A bird in the hand. He's not going to lead us to its mate. I'd like to give the lady a little more rope. Well, I... Thanks. I thought you'd agree. I'm glad. 
I have some rather startling news I thought you should know before it hits the headlines. Come in. It seems that your first hunch, remember, that a hitchhiker was responsible for your husband's death? Well, Mrs. Williams, you may have been right. Why, I, I don't understand. Your husband's briefcase turned up in Kansas City yesterday, in a moving van that had stopped at the scene of the accident that night. Apparently, the murderer made his getaway in it. That explains the wavy skid marks that made us suspect your husband was ill or unconscious at the time of the crash. Yes, I... I suppose it does. And by now, the man is probably out of the country and never will be found. Don't you worry, Mrs. Williams. <laughs> there were fingerprints on that briefcase. And as soon as we get the FBI report from Washington, his identity will be known and his description sent out on police broadcast. Oh, we'll find him all right. But just now, we're keeping things quiet so the murderer will feel safe until we are ready to close in on him. Yes, I... Uh... I can see the wisdom of that. Yes, I thought you would understand and cooperate. As soon as we know his name, it is possible that you might recognize it as someone with a motive. There's that possibility. You know I'll do everything I can to help. I'm sure of it. Now I'll run along. You'll hear from me. I'll let myself out. Don't bother. And don't worry. Good day. Dollar thirty five. See, everything after the letter J in the first name has been obliterated by heavy writing over it. The only impress letters legible are those between words or before them, like uh, R N S at the end of this name here, and the Hotel Santa here before the word Evanston. Well, Tom, don't you think it's about time you retired? Why, there isn't even evidence there of Mrs. Williams' intent to communicate with Torrance. And who do you think she'd be to part to the telegraph office to wire to? The League of Decency? I'll tell you what I think, that you should have brought her in when I first told you to. By the time you get her now, she'll figure out a way to tip Torrance off. You'd be that much tougher to find. Not unless she's tipped him off from your office. Ernie's got her on ice waiting for you.
have a heart, son. You trying to wreck that engine? Oh. Sure. It's a hobby of mine. The way you're going at it, you can't miss. I just can't let you ruin that beautiful motor. Start her up. Okay, start her up. You're certainly not a mechanic by trade. Hands like that. Maybe it's a hobby of mine. Gee, what happened to your head? Perhaps I was talking when I should have been listening. Okay? Okay by me. Hill. So long, Marcia. Bye. He's all right now. You better lay off so till the boss gets back. I'm the boss. <laughs> I guess the new cars are a little bit over my head. Now, with a jalopy, it's different. Aren't there any mechanics around here you can hire? No, they all went over to the new factory in Mansville. I guess they got better wages. Tough break. Yeah. How much do I owe you? Oh, forget it. Well, I'll be shoving along. Well, at least have a cook in the house. You might as well. Marsha, can I use your phone a minute, please? Sure, help yourself, Uncle Ben. Never rain, but what it pours. 650, please. Flat tire this morning. Now the dang engine stalled on me. Nice and cold. Wilson's garage? No, I did not give you the wrong number. Fine thing using my phone to cheat me out of repair bills. Aren't you ashamed? You gave me the wrong number. Uh, 650. You're a nice girl, Marsha Peters, and your ma's a fine woman. And I'll always buy my gas and oil here. But you ain't never gonna tinker with my car again. Busy? Busy. Always busy. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we're not so busy. Would you like to do another good deed and give Uncle Ben a hand? Why not? Where is your car, mister? Maybe I can help you. Why, well, are you a good mechanic? Very good. And very reasonable. Well, just what you need, girl. Better hire him. It's an idea, Uncle Ben. Come on. Thanks for the coke. Sure. Well, I got Uncle Ben fixed up all right. Nothing but a sticky carburetor valve. Bye. I hope he paid you. What for? It only took a minute. You're certainly not money conscious, stranger. There. This is no kind of work for a girl. Well, somebody has to do it if I want to stay in business. And I want to. There must be some business that you're better suited for. Can you lease this place to somebody? Sure. I did while my husband was overseas. But when he was killed in Okinawa, well, we made a lot of plans for the future here. And I had a hunch he'd like it if I took over and tried to make a go of it. Takes more than a hunch to do that. I got along famously. Business has been fine until lately when the help got short. Could be again. I had a good mechanic. Yeah. You sure need one, all right. Well, for Pete's sake, say yes or no. Do you want the job or don't you? You mean you'd hire me without knowing anything about me? You can repair automobiles. What else do I need to know? 
except your name. Well? Why not? Sure. I'll try it for a while till you get someone permanent. The name's Bill Walker. Okay, Bill, it's a deal. And maybe if business gets real good, you'll want to stay. Well, don't count on it. Where's this go, on the rack? Yeah. It happened. It's a boy. Eight and a half pounds. A pair of shoulders like a prize fighter. Well, congratulations, Papa. How's Jay? Ah, oh, perfect. Everything's perfect. <laughs> Gotta get down to the store and tell the gang. Almost forgot. Oh, gee, thanks, Ed. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I won't have enough for the gang. Yippee! <laughs> Maybe you can use this token from the slightly delirious new father. Thanks. Say, we haven't uh, settled the matter of wages yet. Maybe I can't pay your regular salary. Suppose we leave that open till you find out how much I'm worth to the business. Doesn't seem to be any business right now. Might be a good time for me to get rid of this beard and find a place to board. We live right next door. I'll go ask Mom. She'll know of a place. Sort of a peaceful house. I noticed it this morning. Oh, gosh, I forgot. She's down helping Mrs. Wellesley with her canning. Mom finds homes for everything, from stray cats... To stray mechanics? <laughs> well, you're not a stray anymore. I'll go phone. Pearl? 674, please. Hello, Ms. Wessler. May I speak to Mother? Hi, Mom. I've got some good news for you. I hired a man for the station. Yeah. <laughs> no. Nobody we know. He's from... He's from out of town. Needs to place a board. You got a good one up your sleeve? <laughs> okay. Says she has to meet you first to come home for supper. Huh? And you like apple or cherry pie? Cherry. Cherry it is, Mom. See you later. Oh, now I gotta get rid of this. Hey, where's the nearest barber shop? The one and only, just up two blocks. Tell Judd you're working for me. When you get back, we'll close up and go home. Thanks. Well, that's real nice. You must have had a good bringing up, young man. Thank you for the young man. We thank thee, O Lord, for thy bounty, and ask thy blessing on this food and on the new friend who shares it with us. I hope you're good and hungry, Mr. Walker. Who wouldn't be? Marsha, she eats like a sparrow, with all the hard work she does. I have your plate, please. Well, she can start taking it easy now. Boss, the help. Thank you. She never takes anything easy. Has to put her whole heart and soul into everything she does. Well, now that you're through with me, Mom, how about Bill? Have you thought of a place for him to stay? Well, why can't he stay right here? We have a spare bedroom going to waste. And I think you like my cooking. Like it? That's very kind of you, Mrs. King, but it seems an imposition. Imposition? Nothing. That's good business. I can get back what I pay you in board and room. Well, Marsha, what a thing to say. If you'd like to stay, we'd like to have you. We have some more vegetables. Mrs. King, you have a boarder. May I have a biscuit, please? Oh, excuse me.
It's wonderful the way tools seem to come alive in your hands. You seem to sort of come alive, too. As though you got real pleasure out of working with them. I do. When you're doing a job with them, you can't think of anything else. Bill, if something's bothering you, why don't you get rid of it? What would you prescribe, doctor? Amputation. For that stupid chip on your shoulder. you need is a ring job. Save yourself some money. Gee, Bill, with, with the baby and everything, I, I just can't afford it now. Oh, we'll take care of that. Hey, boss. How's Ed's credit? Good enough for a ring job? Well, sure, if I can hold Junior as collateral. Oh, not a chance, fella. <laughs> Never mind her. I'll do it on my own time. Oh, thanks, Bill. Maybe we'll see you tonight, huh? Some shoulders, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Some father, huh? <laughs> Bye, Marcia. Bye, Marcia. Bye. Nice kid. Hey, was Ed clowning about their being hard up? No. Things have been pretty tough for him ever since he got out of the service. Fix a car for him, Bill, and only charge him for the labor, okay? Then he gets it for free. I'd already done knocking that off. Say, we could make it an anniversary present. Anniversary of what? Junior's arrival. Mine. Three months ago today. <laughs> Time certainly flies. That was a lucky day when you came to MP service. Your work's been bringing in a lot of business. I'm glad of that. Hated to have fallen down on Mom and you. <laughs> Say, look, boss, why don't we three celebrate tonight and go to the movies? Ed said he and Jane were going. Well, that lets Mom out. She'll be babysitting. I'd love to go, Bill. I haven't been in ages. Here's your opportunity. Go to work. This is Sheila Graham with the latest news of the shocking Williams murder case. While beautiful Irene Williams is held for trial, charged with conspiring to kill her late husband, the police are searching for James Torrance, believed to be the lover of Mrs. Williams and her partner in the horrible murder of Walter Williams. If I'm handling your case, my dear Mrs. Williams, I want one-third of everything you get. You're out of your mind. You don't realize what I'll get as Walt's widow. Perhaps you don't realize the spot you're in. Torrance's fingerprints were found not only on your husband's briefcase, but, in a manner of speaking, on your reputation as well. There's a detective named Quincy, a very smart cookie. He isn't exactly for you. Frankly, Mr. Warner, I'm beginning to wonder if my attorney is for me. Underestimating the enemy's ammunition would scarcely be wise. Now, if we can get to trial before Torrance is found, they'll never get a conviction. But... But what? If he shows up, we may have to fry him. Oh, no. Let's not cross that bridge until we have to. But if it comes to a choice, we're not going to burn, are we? Our uh, the chatterbox this afternoon. What about this afternoon? Oh, I'm sorry, boss. I guess it was wool gathering. You're supposed to do that in the spring. Is there anything you don't know? Yes. What San Francisco got that we haven't? Better newspapers, for one thing. Anyway, California's supposed to be the land of opportunity. I thought that by now you liked it here. I do. Very much. It's a good town. Nice people. Swell boss. Thanks. We like you, too. No fooling, Bill. You'd be surprised how many people ask questions about you. 
What kind of questions? Oh, where you came from. Do you have any family? And do you like it here, and are you going to stay? Al Knox asked me at the movie last night if you wanted to join the volunteer fire department. Just interested, friendly things. I suppose it is natural for people to wonder about a stranger who moves into their community, like I did. You know, I've been thinking. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea, you and I going to the movies last night. It's all right being seen in the station and here with Mom, but... You get used to that in a town this size. They're always trying to marry people off. You just ignore it, and after a while, they forget about it. I'll go get cleaned up for supper. How many years this Sunday takes me back? Did you always fall asleep during the sermon? <laughs> I wasn't asleep, Mrs. Peters. I merely closed my eyes to concentrate. Oh, well, that's what you call it. I had to nod you to stop you from nodding. Quiet. You're disturbing my reminiscent mood. Even smells the same. Could be the same bees buzzing in the same clover. <laughs> As they say, you can take a boy out of the country, but... A rolling stone gathers no moss. It has to stop rolling sometime, doesn't it, Bill? Sometime, maybe. We grow a very becoming shade of moss here in Larkspur. Don't you think? You grow a lot of nice things here. Anyone in particular? You'll have to skip the answer to that one. Someone tore it out of the book. You're married, aren't you, Bill? Yep. That's right. You must have loved her very much to have been hurt so deeply. To be so afraid of someone, even yourself. Maybe it's better that way. And no one gets hurt. Bitterness and hatred hurt everyone. Can't you see, Bill? They're like a, a wall that shuts out all the sunshine from a garden and lets everything wither. Make room in your heart for something else, can't you? I guess this is my day for sermons. Sorry. As Mom would say, you never get rich minding the other fellow's business. Hey, that's a flyer. I'll be seeing you.
Leslie sent a couple of jars of peaches. Said you helped her can them. Oh, thank you. When I delivered the Doc's car, he insisted that I have a bite with him. Where's the boss? There's a book back at the library for me. Huh? What a day. Hey, what's the idea? Are you darning my socks? Well, I thought a drawer full of holy ones isn't doing you much good. I found it when I put fresh papers in your bureau yesterday. You have a heap of things that need mending, haven't you, son? Does Marcia know? Do you think I'd tell her? This is your problem, Bill. Because I found out about it doesn't give me the right to tell anyone else, not even Marcia. When you trust folks, you trust them. And you give them a chance to work out things the way that seems right to them. How can one little woman be so big? Don't forget, it's a lot easier to be tolerant and understanding at 50 than it is at 25. Yeah, Mom. I'm going next door for a while. Grandma Thompson's ill. Anything wrong? Come in. I want to tell you something. I'm checking out. Has something happened? No. Just... I'm doing what I should have done a long time ago. Moving along. But why, Bill? My name isn't even Bill. There isn't any Bill Walker. I'm Walter Williams. The late Walter Williams. Walter Williams? I, I don't understand. You may not even after I've told you, but at least you'll know the whole story. Sit down, please. Finally, Larkspur. And you. From there on, you know. I'm glad you're going back to make things right. Going back? Wild horses couldn't drag me back. What are you going to do about your wife? Nothing. You're going to let her go to trial for murder? Oh, no, Bill. Why not? She tried to kill me, she and her cousin. But they didn't. Who says they didn't? Let them try and prove it. No matter what your wife did, she can't be tried for something that didn't happen. Oh, Bill, can't you see? You bet I can see. She deserves everything she's getting. Sorry part of it is they'll never convict her. No, Bill. The sorry part is you're not big enough to take a hard jolt to your pride and to your ego. Sure, it hurts to be tricked and cheated by someone you loved and believed in. But that doesn't give you the right to take justice into your own hands, to, to trample on the hearts of others and walk out on life. A barren, frustrated boyhood. A marriage to a woman who accepted my love yet despised me so thoroughly she resorted to murder. I'll never think of our moments together without nausea. I feel stripped bare, degraded. Even me. Oh, Bill, please. Don't destroy the one chance we have for happiness. We haven't got a chance. Doing the right thing never works out. I know. In this world, you turn the other cheek and you get hit with a lug wrench. Forget me, boss. Try and forgive me.
shoulders like a prize fighter. You know, I hate to tell you how many years this Sunday takes me back. You have a heap of things that need mending, haven't you, son? enough to come along to substantiate at least the Larkspur portion of what I've told you. Very thoughtful of you, Mrs. Peters. Mr. Williams, when you read in the newspaper that the hitchhiker who attacked you had been, well, a close friend of your wife's for some time, it must have been a great shock to you. I didn't come here to discuss my emotional reactions, Lieutenant. If you need me for anything further, Captain, my office will know where to reach me. Let's go, Mark. Just a minute, Mr. Williams. We'll need your signed statement for the grand jury when we ask for your wife's release. It won't take long to be typed. Yeah. All right. killed him. No. He tried to kill me. Thought he had. And he ran into the truck. It was an accident. An accident? You wait all these months to tell this story. You let me rot in this filthy jail. Wait a minute. You let everybody believe you're dead. Pretty convenient, wasn't it? A dead man can't be tried for murder. Mr. Williams, perhaps your wife would understand better if you would explain to her about the amnesia. Amnesia? Oh, don't tell me you believe he had amnesia. Where's he been all this time, just wandering around in the days? Tells us he's been in Larkspur, a little town in Idaho, working as a mechanic in a service station run by Mrs. Peters here. I understand perfectly. Now that my chance for happiness is dead, I suppose you'll demand the divorce I begged you to give me so that I could marry Jim. That's fantastic. Yes, isn't it? After you telling us that the man you picked up was a perfect stranger. Well, that's not true. The time and place for meeting Jim had all been arranged. I must advise you 
There's a law that a wife can't testify against her husband. There's a law against murder, too, but that didn't stop him. And nothing's going to stop me until I'm through. It's all right with me, Captain. Go on. Talk your head off. I, I was to have gone with him to Denver. He insisted on it, although I was quite ill. Several hours before we were to leave, he, he came home. There was a violent scene. He, he threatened to kill me unless I agreed to give up Jim. And I wish he had. This is incredible. Not one word that she has said is true. Then you have nothing to worry about. Mrs. Williams, was there a witness to the threats you mentioned? No. Uh, unless the maid overheard, she was in the apartment. I in fact, she picked up the pieces of the vase that he threw at me. Where is she now? I... I don't know. She, she left me suddenly after all this began. I Please, could the questions wait? I, I feel rather ill. Will you have Mrs. Williams ready for the grand jury at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning? That's all. We're going to hold you too, Williams. On what charge? Suspicion of murder. But he's not guilty of any of these things. Then it should be easy for him to prove it. Take him down and book him. That fiction of Mrs. Williams must have been very convincing. No, we just couldn't buy that yarn you tried to sell us. Let's go. And Daly's going to cover Williams' office. Okay, boys, hop to it. I want all I can get by 10 a.m. tomorrow for the grand jury. Okay, Chief. Oh, Tom, don't miss a bit. Dig up everything you can on Williams and the Peters dame. You sort of believed Irene Williams' story, didn't you, Ben? She made better sense than he did. Well, sure, she's a better liar than he is. Don't forget, I went all through her grieving widowhood with her. She's a bad customer. Well, that's for the grand jury to decide. And Williams insisted on letting her talk. So it's his funeral. Funeral, all right. Especially with that yarn he told. But murder's out of character for him. There's a few pieces missing somewhere. They might be in Idaho. If it's not too much out of character for you to get going. You're going to miss me, Cal, when I retire next year. Maybe I'll join Private Eye and solve your cases for you. Mr. Williams? Thanks. You sort of deal from the bottom here, don't you? Sorry, Williams. Okay, Williams. Well. Not very good news, judging from your faces. Well, Wolf, the grand jury returned indictment against you. Mrs. Williams was released. I see. Now, don't you worry, Walt. We'll have you back at work where you're needed, and in short order. Come on, Eldridge. There's a visitor waiting far more attractive than we old fogies. We're just leaving, Mrs. Peters. But remember, don't hesitate to call on me for anything. Thank you so much. Hi, boy. Bill, what have I done to you? If it weren't for me, you wouldn't be here. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't be. I came back here because I wanted to believe in the things you do. I still do, no matter what happens. Will you do something for me? Mm -hmm. Go back home, where I know you'll be taken care of. Not a chance. You'll have to think of a better reason than that to get rid of me. I'm a big girl now. I've just been to Larkspur, Williams, where I found these newspaper clippings. 
Of course, some of them are three months old, but you seem to treasure them, so I brought them along. So? I don't think they exactly substantiate your claim of amnesia. As if you were interested in substantiating any claim of mine. Now, let's get one thing straight. Most people, when they get in a jam, think the police are only interested in the prosecution. Our job is to get the facts, the truth. And the truth never hurt anyone but the fellow that lied. Unless he was a beautiful woman. Oh, quit kidding yourself, Williams. You made the boner. I had no more to do with Torrance's death than you did. And out of the whole population of Northern California, you just happened to pick up a hitchhiker who happened to be your wife's boyfriend. Ah, have a heart, Williams. I suppose you'll tell the truth when you take the stand, but you better have some mighty conclusive proof if you expect the jury to believe it. Wait, Lieutenant. Bill, we all know you're not guilty, but we're going to need help to prove it and need it badly. Lieutenant Quincy can't take sides, but if we're right, he has to be on ours. And I have a hunch he wants to be. Why don't you tell him the whole story? All of it. Please. I'd like to. Quincy, very much. Guess I should have told the whole truth in the first place. But I wanted to clean this mess up with as little scandal as possible. Well? No sign of the lug wrench or anything. My dear Mrs. Peters, will you please stop trying to be a detective? How many times do you think the police have combed this spot for any kind of evidence? Now, be a nice girl. Take Mr. Williams' advice. Go back to Larkspur. What time is it? It's only 4 o'clock. We still have time to go back to town and go on our hunt for Sue Lynn. Now, look here, young woman. You've had me on the run since early morning. But, Lieutenant, the maid seems to be our only hope now. We've got to keep looking till we find her, that's all. That's all? Wait. She was naturalized, wasn't she? Suffering chopsticks. Quincy, you dumb flatfoot. This, uh, this Sue, Sue, what's her name? Was Chinese born. If a port of entry was San Francisco, there'd still be a file on her, photo and all. Let's go. Back to town. Immigration. <laughs> Council has given us the right lead. Uh, you are Singh. Understand? You savvy English? Also French, Italian, and Hebrew. May one ask what is desired? We are looking for Su Ling Chung. The Chinese consul said you were her uncle, and might tell us where she is. This daughter of my brother, has she offended the honorable police? Oh, no. They just wanted to ask her some questions about Mr. Williams, the man she used to work for. Ah Singh's heart is heavy that he cannot lead you to her. But things that are not known cannot be told. Well, if you hear anything of her, report it to headquarters. Untruth is not good for soul, and not wisdom when told to policemen. Better for the soul to be kind than to be wise. Sulin must keep violence to help in this matter. You know, you're quite a gal, in case I haven't told you lately. You're just too easily pleased, that's all. There must be a way out. Why can't we find it? Oh, buck up, boss. Tomorrow, another day. Yesterday, you go to trial. Oh, Bill, I'm afraid. And the state intends to prove, on any reasonable doubt, that the defendant, Walter Williams, did, with malice of forethought, kill the deceased James Torrance, whom he knew to be his wife's lover. And that with his victim dead beside him, he drove his car into the course of an oncoming truck, jumping clear of himself some seconds prior to the crash. And subsequently, he made his getaway in the back of a loaded furniture van. And for three months, as Bill Walker, he laughed at justice. 
What if imprisoned his unfaithful wife for conspiracy in his own murder? But then he decided that being dead cramped his style. He thought he could eat his cake and have it too. So he returned, most anxious to explain his long absence and to right the dreadful mistake that had imprisoned his wife for three months. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it was a cold-blooded, premeditated murder. It must be punished to the fullest extent of the law. Call the first witness, please. Captain Callahan, did Walter Williams tell you what suddenly cured his amnesia after three months? No, he did not. But he did tell you the man that struck the blow which caused the amnesia was a total stranger, a hitchhiker he had picked up. Yes. And that he knew nothing of this man's identity or relationship with his wife until he suddenly recovered from his amnesia and heard or read the details. That's what he said. That's all. Thank you, Captain. Your witness, Counselor. No questions. No. I saw no signs of amnesia, but definite concussion. He was a bit evasive in answering questions, but not vague or unsure. In your opinion, Doctor, could this head injury have been caused by a fall? Yes. If the head had struck on some object, such as a stone or a metal pipe. That's all, thank you. Your witness. Dr. Bender. Are you familiar with a tool known as a lug wrench for changing automobile wheels? I'm afraid I am, sir. I've had a regular epidemic of flat tires lately. Well, then, in your opinion, could this head injury which you treated have been caused by a blow from a lug wrench? Yes. It could have been caused by that, too. Thank you, Doctor. The ones with the earliest dates, you will notice, are heavily creased, as though they'd been carried in a wallet or a coat pocket. Thank you. Lieutenant Quincy, will you kindly tell the court where you found these newspaper clippings? In the bedroom occupied by Mr. Williams in Mrs. Peters' home in Larkspur, Idaho. Uh, is this your handwriting, Miss Revere? Yes, sir. And that's the message, at least our record carbon of it. Uh, would you read it to the court, please? June 9th, 8.32 p.m., message from Mrs. Walter Williams, Penthouse D. Mr. Williams called, said he wants you to forget all about a certain problem that Softy is going to take care of it thoroughly. Was there any other conversation? Well, I, I just asked if that was all, and he said, yes, she'll understand, and, and sort of laughed as if it were a joke and hung up. Some joke killing the wife's boyfriend. <laughs> that is the state versus Walter Williams. All the rounds so far have gone to the prosecution. And it was a grim-faced Williams who has returned to his cell this afternoon. What the score will be after he takes the stand is anybody's guess. But he's going to need some lucky punches to get a decision. And though Torrance struck with intent to kill, after telling you this is from Irene and me, sucker, you still telephoned Illinois to find out if there was a cousin Jim. <laughs> you are hard to convince, aren't you, Mr. Williams? Is it so incredible that a man should fight against believing such a thing about his wife? Oh, that is very touching. From a husband who planned a trip on which he intended to destroy his wife and did kill her lover. That's a lie. Your Honor, I object to the conclusions drawn by the prosecutor and move that it be stricken from the records. But, Your Honor, there is a corpus delecti, remember? Who was your wife's lover. Objection sustained. There's also her own story, which in front of witnesses you insisted she tell. And then we have your own two different stories from your own lips. One featuring a perfectly strange hitchhiker, the second an equally strange cousin Jim, without a questionable substantiation for either bit of fiction. <laughs>
you'll remember me, don't you? I was here with Lieutenant Quincy from the police department. I just followed Sulin up the stairs. I saw her come in here. You must be mistaken. I'm not mistaken. She's here. I must see her. Ah, Sing, don't you understand? It's to save a man from prison, even from death. I will send her to you. Young wife, Hong Ting Chang, Pa Ching Wa. Su Ling Bu Su Nao Bong. Oh, Su Lin, we've been looking for you all these weeks. Mr. Williams needs your help so desperately. I cannot help. You must forget that you found Su Lin. Forget it? But you're his only witness. You're the only one that can help. Not as a witness. Only with silence can I repay his great kindness to me and my family in China. Why? For I heard other things. That most unhappy day, from Mrs. Williams' bedroom, his voice pretty loud and angry. A flower vase broken to pieces. He can explain all that. They do not believe what he's already told. That I heard anything would do harm. Don't you see? Yes. Much sorrow comes from women who know not honor and truth. And Mrs. Williams, she's not true even to that Torrance man. What makes you say that? That night when he was killed, her sickness was but wall of falsehood behind which she could go secretly to a meeting place. You, you mean she went out that night? Su Lin, are you sure? Yes, because next morning in her bedroom, I found street shoes that had been worn. Her coat on the closet floor, with the sleeves turned inside out, as though removed hurriedly. And in one pocket, a door key to some hotel. Su Lin, that's it. Proof that she and Torrance had planned to meet that night after he killed Mr. Williams. What hotel was it? Oh, I... I don't remember. The key. What did you do with it? Returned to coat pocket. Come on. We'll get to Lieutenant Quincy. He'll know what to do. And pray, Sulin, every step of the way. Now hold everything. Even if this long shot don't work out, we'll just keep on pitching. Here it is, yes. Room 302, Airport Hotel, Oakland. Maybe we got our miracle. A special little Chinese one. It is the hope that Su Lin was of small help to Mr. William. Oh, Su Lin. Come on, Kappa. Uh, Next stop, Oakland. A certain little lady's hotel rendezvous. I was on night duty then, all right, but I sure don't remember a looker like this. Quite a dish, eh? A little too highly seasoned for my digestion, thanks. Lieutenant, I just found a couple of cars for room 302 on June 9th. George Baxter, checked out at noon. Mr. and Mrs. J. Burns, room not slept in. J. Burns. Burns. Look, Quincy, the handwriting on the card is identical to that on the photograph. And here's a little boy, the same thing, the cover-up telegram to Aunt Margaret. Now look at the impressions. J. here, and here, R.N.S. J. Burns, that's the name she started a telegram to. Room not slept in. Say, I got that dame peg now, Lieutenant. She said they'd be out of the room by midnight as her husband was catching a plane. But Quincy... The reservation for Sam in. Yes, sir. This ties it all up, doesn't it? Yeah, like a greased pig. What do you mean? We've got the evidence now, the proof. Of what? Sue Lynn's theory, the diary in which playing the field? This evidence only proves that she came here to keep a date with a man named Burns. We can't even prove that he didn't keep the date. But you'll know he didn't. There wasn't any burns. It was only a name that she and Torrance used. Fine. If you can prove that, Williams will be free. But none of this will prove it. Sorry, Copper, but we are just up another blind alley. Willie? Yes, sir. There's a couple of sample cases from Mr. Sam Andrews. Came up from the station this morning. Take them to Paula B right away. Sure thing, sir. Proceed, Mr. Eldridge. 
Your Honor, we will call Mrs. Irene Williams. Take the stand, Mrs. Williams. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in this cause to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, Sophie God? I do. What cooks? The defense calling her? Mr. Eldridge, what's the purpose in calling this witness? Merely for purpose of identifying handwriting. Now, Mrs. Williams, this photograph of you... Was stolen from my apartment. So? According to the inscription, to Walt, my adoring and adored husband, Irene, this belongs to Mr. Williams. This is your handwriting, isn't it? Of course. I'm touched that he should have wanted it so badly. And this telegram, addressed to Mrs. Margaret Hubbard. Is that also your handwriting? It is. Now, Mrs. Burns, I mean Mrs. Williams, uh, this photograph is inscribed to Jim, my adoring and adored Irene. Did you write this too? I, I see no point in all this. Merely answer counsel's questions. Did you write it? I did. And these letters addressed to Mr. James Torrance, did you write them? Yes. And this monogrammed uh, garment, a gift from you to Mr. Torrance? Why must I be tortured again by all this? I never made any secret of my love for Jim Torrance. That's why he's dead. Your love for Jim Torrance. Yet on the very night he was killed, you had a rendezvous with a man named Burns, didn't you? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know any man named Burns. I was at home that night, very ill. Oh, yes, the sleeping pills. Well, you must walk in your sleep, then. For you spent at least part of that night at the airport hotel in Oakland, where you registered for Mr. and Mrs. J. Burns. Don't waste the court's time trying to deny it. This is the registration card that you signed at 9.20 p.m. And there's the room clerk who assigned you to room 302. And this, Mrs. Williams, is the key to room 302, which you very carelessly left in the pocket of a coat which was found in your closet yesterday. All right, I was there. Now you're satisfied. Not quite. This J. Burns, Mrs. Williams, is his first name Jack? Yes. Have you been in contact with him lately? No, no. How long since you've seen or heard from this Jack Burns? Well, I don't know. I don't remember. You bet she doesn't remember, because there isn't any Jack Burns, and there never was. That was an alias for Jim Torrance. And it was Torrance who was to have met you that night, after your charming little plot to kill your husband had been duly executed. It's not true. It's not true. I have bad news for you, Mrs. Williams. I can prove it's true. These pajamas, these letters, this picture, all of which you identified for the court, were found in this suitcase, which is full of the clothes and personal belongings of Mr. James Torrance. And the suitcase was found in the baggage room of the airport hotel, where it's been held since June 9th. And it says on this tag, in large print, hold for Jack Burns. That is all, Mrs. Williams. Just a moment, Mrs. Williams. Your Honor, in view of the evidence presented, we now ask for a dismissal of the state's case against Walter Williams. And we intend to charge Irene Williams with conspiracy to commit murder against her husband, Walter Williams. Oh, no. The case against Walter Williams dismissed. Court adjourned until 2 o'clock. Well, that's that, Walt. Congratulations, Mr. Williams. I haven't the words for it, Quincy, but we... We could never have made it without you. Ah, sure you could. You know, son, right always wins if you give it a little push. Especially when you get a copper like this one to do the push. <laughs> well, I'll be seeing you. You know, it'll seem kind of strange being able to eat and sleep without someone getting in your hair all the time. <laughs> oh, fine, Walt. We're looking forward to having your hand on the wheel again. The Denver plants are waiting for you to open them. You think you can make it in the morning? How about it, Counselor? You bet you can. Oh, good. Well, I'll be running along. Well, you think you like Denver? It's okay by me, boss. Yes. Impact. The force with which two lives can come together. 
sometimes for evil, sometimes for good.